you talked to uh, Marshawn at all? Any sense of where he's at or where you guys are? I from? haven't talked to Marshawn. I know John has, I believe, talked to Doug, his agent. I talked to Doug a little bit, and the reality with Marshawn is obviously he's still coming off an injury. Uh, I think he's still trying to figure out what he wants to do. Um, and obviously we'd be open to potentially having him back depending on what his position is. When do you need to know that? Because it, it impacts maybe who you would go after in free agency yeah. or the draft when it comes to the running back you know, position. I, I think it's, you know, all of free agency is like a jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, you got X amount of dollars to spend. And I, I think part of a lot of it has to come from Marshawn and, you know, what he wants to do, how quickly he, he feels like he can come back off the injury, what he wants to make. Does he want to make a commitment to, to going back to work again? Uh, I just love the fact that if he's, if he's in the running back room, we've got somebody for our young guys to look up to and, and learn how to work from. When you looked at his film from weeks one through six, yeah. still the same guy? Uh, yeah, that I mean, came. look, we, you know, I think we've got a couple of good third down change of pace guys, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of young guys we're excited about. So the, the first and second down run game, uh, both with uh, Lynch and Martin, uh, did a nice job last year. Do you think this, this draft class has a couple potential number one wide receivers that, that could fill that role for you guys? I think this uh, wide receiver class is a little different than a lot of years. A lot of years you have uh, a dominant one or two or three wide outs where everybody goes, oh, they're the top three. I think what we're seeing this year is that for about three or four rounds, there's good wide outs. Uh, solid wideouts that can come in and start for you, but I don't think there's any really, you know, just number one guy that's going to come in and say I'm the number one wideout in this draft. So I think it's more about finding guys that fit what you do scheme-wise, and um, I think that's what we're in the process of trying to figure out now. John had said it in a podcast on the team website that in free agency you guys are going after young blossoming players, and last year there were a lot of older veterans, and there was a high volume mm -hmm. of free agents. Why mm -hmm. this? kind of shift in philosophies we well, had. Well, I wasn't here last year, so yeah. I can't speak to what, what, why they decided to do what they did last year. I can only tell you from my perspective that free agency uh, always is perceived with caution in my eyes, and I think there's more busts over, over time than there have been Pro Bowl players. So what are you looking to do in free agency? Number one, fill some holes. We, we have some holes we need to fill. Uh, number two, I'd much rather have some young guys uh, that, that can compete and potentially come to Vegas with us and be a part of what we're doing going forward, as opposed to you know the 35-year-old stop gaps. So I'm not saying there's not a, a fit for some of those one-year guys, because there are, there are certainly fits, but you'd, I think we'd much rather do it with some young guys that can compete and hopefully be part of who we are down the road. On the lines of building toward the future, when you sign multi-year contracts, you guys have a unique scenario or situation where Players who are signed today are done so in California with the highest state income taxes. Yeah. Nevada, there are zero state income taxes. Right. Does that afford you some versatility to structure contracts, backloading some money to make your team more attractive to potential free agents? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, we can't counsel them on tax matters, you know, technically and legally, but I think they're all, all aware of it. And uh, I think once we start getting into trying to structure contracts, uh, that cross over into the Nevada time frame. Uh, we've already seen agents that have asked, a bunch of agents have asked questions and want to know when it's going to be. And really the genesis of that is, hey, you go from 13% to 0%, that's, that's pretty good pop in a contract. How much uh, competition do you guys anticipate for Jared Cook on the, on the market? And is that still a high priority to re-sign him? Yeah, I'd, we'd love to have Jared back. I mean, he had a great year, represented us in the Pro Bowl. Uh, I mentioned earlier about free agency being a jigsaw puzzle, and that's what it is. And, you know, we've got a bunch of needs we've got to prioritize. Uh, we'd love to have Jared back, but we're trying to figure out, as he is, what's, what's the market going to be and what, what, what's he want to do and, and what can we do when we find out what that market is. Mike, I got a team building question for you. Yeah. Um, so obviously the league MVP is in your division and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Um, I know you're going to build the best team possible the best way you want to, but I'm wondering if there's even like just a little bit that makes you have to try to build your team around contending with this guy because he's just 23. Yeah, and, and I think I've always believed that when you build a team in the NFL, you got to build it based on who you're trying to beat in your division. So it, it's not just about Kansas City but it's about those, those pass rushers and the Chargers have, and it's about every team in our division being able to rush the quarterback and be 
uh, dynamic on offense. I really meant what I said in there. I think it's it might be the most challenging league to def uh, in in both conferences. Most excuse me, most challenging division in both conferences from that perspective. So I sit there and stare at that whiteboard every day, and say, so I got Patrick Mahomes, and we got Tyreek Hill, and we got Kelsey, and how do you defend that, right? And then you flip it over and look at the Chargers and look at their pass rushers. And then you look at Von Miller. And so as as I look at that whiteboard, it's just a constant reminder of the challenge. And I think it's uh, I think you're always trying to build a roster to tr defend the quality in your division. And Patrick Mahomes is as good as any quarterback in the league right now. Mike, you're, you're pretty bullish on, about Derek Carr. What do you obviously the conversation in other places is a little different about him? You know, just looking at last year, mm -hmm. some in inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Where does he still need to improve? Yeah, I think he, I think Dark can make every throw, any throw you ask him to make. Um, I think when you're talking about a team that's four and twelve last year, you know, and you know everybody talks about 2016, but it's been two hard years since then. Uh, and there's been some injuries up front, and there's been some breakdowns in protection. He's gotten beat up, and I, I think there's a tendency, just about any quarterback I've ever seen in the National Football League, when they get beat up, bad habits occur. You know, and I don't care if you're talking about, you know, Eli Manning, who won two Super Bowls. You know, when Eli got beat up, bad things happen. So uh, I think you have to take into consideration when you evaluate Derek what he had around him, both as from a pass protection and, and dynamic weapons, and go from there. And, and I know the talent's there, and, and I believe in the kid. AJ, uh, McCarron has a pretty sizable bonus coming yeah. up. Do you guys anticipate paying that and keeping him around in 2019? Have you made that choice? I think, uh, you, we're, you know, I think John and I both believe that the backup quarterback's one snap away from playing. So uh, it's important to have a guy like McCarron ready to go. Do you feel like go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, so much of the combine, while is a focus on draft prospects. There's also free agency. Free agency is near. What's your involvement in terms of all of that, the meetings with agents and just some of the back channel type of things that happen here? Well, we obviously have to be very careful because of the rules in place. And, you know, the league year doesn't start until March 13th. And, you know, so we've done, I've spent hours and hours with John Gruden and, and the coaching staff watching free agency film. Mm -hmm. We've spent, I don't know, the last couple of weeks kind of leading into that just doing nothing but free agency, talking about what we're going to do, what our game plan is, how we're going to do it, and how does that complement the draft. You know, So don't even smile, McDonough. Just keep walking. Both you guys. Don't say a word. <laughs> you too, Ryan. I want to hear it. Um, so really the, re the reality is there's got to be a, a complete game plan in place. You've got to take into account what are the strengths and weaknesses of the draft and how do we go out and fill some of those complementary holes in free agency. And that's kind of what we've been doing. You've done this for a while, obviously, involved in the draft. Having three picks, you know, four in the top 32 kind of gives you guys kind of... Top 35. Top 35, sorry. Come on, man. Come on, Vic. Come on, Vic. Come on, Vic. It's early. I haven't had my coffee yet. But I kind of put you guys in the driver's seat a little bit in this draft. You guys kind of controlling how this goes a little bit and dictating the tempo? I think any time you have multiple picks in the first round, teams are interested in what you may or may not do. So I think we're going to have a lot of interest in our picks, and I think we'll be open for business. When you look at the roster and the guys that are under contract, do you feel like you have to go get that free safety, the deep safety kind of leader? Obviously, Reggie getting older, Marcus being a yeah. uh, Gilchrist being a free agent. Do you think that's a, a point that you have to address? I think the, the, the problems we have, Coach, the problems we have, uh, we have so many needs right now. I don't think we can adjust approach one. I keep talking to our salary cap people and our coaches and personnel people, and it, it, it sounds weird, but I keep talking about be nimble. We've got to be nimble throughout the whole process. We've got to be able to address, you know, you talk about a free safety, but we have so many needs. At, at the end of the day, you know, we've, we've got offensive line needs. We've got corner needs. We've got needs everywhere. So uh, it all depends who's available, when they're available, and whether we're talking free agency or draft.